Okay, so here's part two of the uh, day one introduction to trigonometry lesson. I apologize. Uh, I got cut off before, so we will continue on as we go. And we were on question number two, and we were saying that the sine of 37 was equal to x over 12. Uh, you would have to cross multiply, and when we do that, you end up getting um, 7.2. All right, so now let's look at example number three. This one says find y to the nearest hundredth. So in order to do that, I'm going to identify the angle that is going to be my reference point. From respect to the 72, the y is going to be our hypotenuse, and the 15 is going to be adjacent to that. All right, so if you remember Sokotoa, We know that adjacent and hypotenuse has to correspond to the cosine function. So the way we write is that the cosine of 72 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So when I cross multiply here, one thing I want you to notice, uh, 15 times 1 is 15. But look what happens when I do y times the cosine of 72. Okay, uh, the way we have to write that is we put the y in front of the cosine 72. All right, so it's y times the cosine of 72. So I can't do this in my calculator in one step. I actually have to separate uh, this by dividing by the cosine of 72. So when I divide, now I go to my calculator and I'm going to type in 15 divided by cosine of 72. So Let's take 15 divided by the cosine of 72, and that should be about 48.54. And uh, we'll round that. They want that to nearest hundredth, so we should be all set. 48.54. All right. Look at example number four. Now, the 50.1 degree angle is the angle in question. Now, never use the 90. It's always one of the other angles that's given to you. So with respect to that angle, X is going to be opposite it, isn't it? Like AB is the hypotenuse. That's across from the 90. Therefore, the 5 must be the adjacent side. Now, the hypotenuse is really out here. We're not using that because the opposites will be have to find. So go back up to Sokotoa. What uses the opposite and the adjacent? Well, now I'm going to highlight some blue. That's going to be the TOA, isn't it? So in this case, we write that as the tangent, the tan of the angle, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. When I cross multiply, now look how this is different than the one above it. Look at what's the, where the variable is. In this example number four, the variable is in the numerator of the fraction. In example number three, it was in the denominator of the fraction. See the Y right there? So it's always easier when the variable's in the numerator because when I cross multiply, it's X times one is X, right? And, and keep in mind again, when I multiply five and the tan of 50.1, put that as a constant in front. Five uh, tan 50.1. And what makes it easier is in a way, I can just go to my calculator and type that in in one step. All right, so I go to my calculator. It's going to be 5 tan 50.1. I'm going to hit enter. Now, this is an interesting one. It does say nearest tenth. So if I look at that value, uh, the 7 here bumps up the 9, and the 9 is going to bump the 5. So this actually ends up being to the nearest to the nearest tenth, this is going to be 6.0. All right, so x is going to be 6.0. Okay, example number five. Again, the angle that is going to be our what we refer to from the perspective of the 60. The hypotenuse is the 11, and then the b to c, that... That X value there, that's more next to that opposite. I'm going to call that the adjacent. So if I go back and look at Sokotoa, what deals with the adjacent and the hypotenuse? All right, let's 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 see what which one does that. Adjacent and hypotenuse was the green, wasn't it? So that's cosine. Okay, so we write this as 
the cosine of 60 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. When I cross multiply, you get x equals 11 cos 60. All right, so now I'll go and I'll look at my calculator. So if I do 11 cos 60 and hit enter, you're at exactly 5.5. Okay, in example number six, uh, the angle is the 32. So keep in mind where the hypotenuse is here. Don't be fooled by this. Again, the hypotenuse is across from the 90. So actually, this side is the hypotenuse. Nine is opposite the angle. X is adjacent to the angle. So the hypotenuse is out. What uses opposite and adjacent? That's tangent, right? TOA. The tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So this is what I was trying to say earlier, is that it's a little harder when the x is in the uh, denominator, because when I cross multiply, 9 times 1 is 9, and I have to multiply x times the tan of 32. So again, I can't just do that in my calculator in one step. To solve, you have to divide by the tan of 32. So I go to my calculator now. Again, I'm not multiplying, I'm dividing. All right, so it's going to be 9 divided by the tan of 32. Okay, that should be about 14.4. All right, now example seven. This time, actually seven and eight are kind of similar in a way because this time we're not trying to um, find a side. We're trying to find the angle. So in number seven, um, from the perspective of the angle, that's y. Uh, the 17 would be the opposite. The 45 would be the adjacent. So this will be the tangent. That's TOA. So this is how we're going to write. The tan of the angle, y, is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Now, please do not cross multiply here. That's going to be a dead end. What you actually have to do in your calculator is something called inverse. So the inverse is denoted as with a little minus 1 of 17 over 45. That's going to be what y is. Let me show you how this works. So the inverse of tan will be completed by pressing the second button. See if I press second tan, okay? What this allows us to do, and I'm just gonna type in 17 divided by 45, this allows us to find the angle, okay? So the angle ends up being about 20.695. Um, uh, let's see what they want us to round to. Nearest degree, so that should be about 21 degrees. So again, what we do is we, we use that inverse when you want to find the angle. Look here. This time, um, this little symbol here is called theta. It's like a zero with a line through it. So this time, uh, the 13 is the hypotenuse. Uh, the 12 is the adjacent. So that should be cosine. So we write that as the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So since I'm finding the angle, this is where I do the inverse. So the second cosine of... 12 over 13, all right, is going to give us what theta is. So I go to my calculator, all right, and I'm going to type in second cos of 12 divided by 13, and this is our angle, which is about uh, 22.6. So theta should be about 20. Uh, three degrees they want that to the nearest degree all right that should be it for this part i'll do a part three coming up uh thank you very much i'll see you soon